Hello, everyone. Let us arise and worship our King. Strength arises. We wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Strength arises. We wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait. Strength arises. Strength arises, we wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord. Strength arises, we wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord. Our God, who reigns forever, our hope, our strong deliverance.
He doesn't get weary. We can lean on him. He's our strength from morning to night. Thank you, Lord, for your strength. Just take a few moments. Just praise the Lord wherever you are. Just raise your hands to him. For the great name of our Lord, Jesus. As morning dawns and evening fades, you inspire songs of praise that rise from earth to touch your heart and glorify your name. Sing that verse with us. As morning dawns, as morning dawns and Songs of praise that rise from earth to touch your heart and glorify your name. your name Jesus in your name we pray come and fill our hearts come and fill our hearts today Lord give us strength strong and mighty tower, your name is a shelter like no one, your name, let the nation sing it loud, cause nothing has a power to say. Father, we welcome your presence in this place this morning, oh God. We lift up your name. We exalt you, oh God. We give you the highest praise, oh God, for you are worthy of all of the glory. 
We give you glory, oh God, and we thank you, Lord God, that you have brought us a new day. And Lord, we stand this morning, oh God, and we thank you for your goodness. We thank you, Lord God, for your sustaining power, for the strength that you give, Lord, for taking us through. And we just want to honor you. We just want to worship you, oh God. And this morning, oh God, for every need that we have, we ask that you would come and meet that need. We know that you are more than able. In fact, you are able to do exceedingly and abundantly, Lord, more than we could ever ask or think. And today, oh God, we want to surrender our hearts afresh to you. We're asking you to come and fill us back up again, oh Lord. And Father, for this message that we're going to hear, your word this morning through your servant, we ask your blessings on it. We ask your anointing to flow through him as he speaks. And we ask, oh God, that you give us ears to hear what you're saying to your church today. Father, we thank you and we bless you and we surrender this service to you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Pastor Deb. Well, welcome, everyone. Thank you for being here with us this morning. It's going to be a special morning. I know you're going to be blessed by what goes on. I know that you are watching online, an online church. Welcome. Welcome. Make sure that you chat. Have a good time. Enjoy yourselves. Hear the word. Be encouraged by it. Talk to one another. And if you are watching it on our YouTube channel later on, thank you. We pray that it encourages you this morning, the message, the word, the truth that you're going to hear, and that you will truly be enriched by it. And you can easily pass all of this on to your friends and your family, so please do. This morning, what we'd like to do, because it is the first Sunday of the month, and the first Sunday of the month, we love to sing happy birthday to all those who are having a birthday in that month. So this is the month of February. So all those who have a birthday in the month of February, we are going to sing to you, and we're going to wish you the best year ever. Okay, are you ready? You can sing also, okay? Happy birthday. To you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday to you, happy birthday, happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday. Happy birthday, happy birthday to you. Oh yeah, happy birthday. And this time, I would like all those who are in the room with you, who are celebrating with you this month, your birthday, to lay hands on you because we're going to pray right now. Father, we thank you so much that you are a faithful God, that you love us so. And you brought all of these people, all of these people who are celebrating a birthday in February into this world. And you have a unique plan and a special, special goal for each and every one of them. And I pray that this year will be special and unique for them, that they would celebrate, laugh, have fun, and know that this year will be the best year that they've ever had. I pray, Lord, that they will celebrate this month with, with many gifts, phone calls, people making sure that they are encouraging the person who's having their birthday this month. And we thank you, Father, that we are able to pray for those who had a natural birth in February. But, Lord, I pray that their birth of knowing you is even greater than the natural birth. So, Father, we pray that you will spiritually bless them in a unique manner and fill their hearts with joy, and have them to know and hear your still small voice always. Thank you for bringing them into your kingdom and allowing them to celebrate the goodness of their God. Father, we thank you. We truly do. We honor you, and we give you glory for these, your children, on this special month. In Jesus' name we pray, and all God's people said, amen and amen. And I thank you. I'm sure that 
you are getting ready, I would like to introduce to you one of our deacons this morning who is going to share the word with you, and I'm looking forward to it with yet another word in season for Islington Evangelist Center. So, are you ready? Ladies and gentlemen, Deacon Germain Cunningham, God bless you. Good morning, good morning, and good morning. Hopefully we are all doing excellent because this is a great day. Amen? Amen. So once again, good morning, brothers, sisters, family, friends. A quick question for you to start off. Have you ever followed directions to arrive at a specific destination and then tried to use shortcuts? To arrive there faster i'll give you a second to think about it yes no maybe so anyone mostly what happens is you end up getting to a place you are uncertain about only to later on figure out it took longer than you expected by not following the exact directions for a specific destination amen anyone know what i'm talking about the shortcuts? Shortcuts can lead to unexpected delays, especially in life. Advice for those that, that happens to, especially myself, stick to your path. Am I the only one? Hopefully not. On YouTube, one of the streaming platforms we use at IEC, for videos, they say like, share, and subscribe to receive more content. With the word today, we are on a journey of faith together to access Christ. So we're on a journey together for those as we build our atmosphere. We're on a journey of faith together to gain access in Christ. So let's set up our own standards of receiving. Amen? Let's hear the word today. Let's receive the word today. And let's example the word. Amen? So I need your help together because we're going to bring this word forward by faith because this is the day that the Lord has made. I'm not here by accident, but on purpose. Not of my own strength or by myself because I have the family on the camera. Amen? Or powerless. God is about to change life for someone out there because your faith is the certainty in the darkness. Amen? That's why today the word has a richness to it because it tackles your faith in Christ as certainty in uncertain times. So the word today to build your expectation has a richness because it's going to tackle your faith in Christ as certainty in uncertain times. For those that like message titles, the title for today's message as we write it down, The Path in Darkness. Once again, The Path in Darkness. Let's say that together. The Path in Darkness. Can we have someone put action to our faith by speaking it into existence? Can we have somebody write that in the chat? Amen. The Path in Darkness darkness. Amen? Your faith is the path in the darkness, and it runs in direct opposition to life. Just like an oxymoron, which features two things that are opposite that go together, your faith and life are an odd pair that function together as partners. When life shows you nothing but bad thing after bad thing, after bad thing, like in a pandemic, faith shows you how great God actually is. Amen? He is unchanged. On this path of faith for the message, I want you to imagine the complexity of being on a pathway. So you could be outside, you could be in a forest, you could be wherever you want to be. I just want you to imagine the complexity of being on a pathway. You can only see so far 
ahead because the road ahead is unknown. It looks like there are multiple ways to take, but you are unsure. You're not sure which way to go. Every step might turn into something else. So there's a consequence for each step and turn. How do you know where to go? Easy answer is faith. Faith helps answer that question. Faith helps order your steps and God keeps you on the path so no harm comes of you. Amen? He's the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Let me illustrate that in language that we understand. Special pandemic language. He's the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. All right. Does that help? Amen. He's the same today, yesterday, and tomorrow. That's special pandemic language right there. Amen. So let me give it to you in a new language. Your faith is strengthened by Christ to grow you stronger in times of trouble in life. Let me encourage you by saying that your time is the most precious thing on earth and eternity. Your time is the most precious thing on earth and eternity. The choices you make with your time determine your destiny in eternity. So let me say that a little slower because I know some of us are waking up out of bed. So once again, let me encourage you and your faith by saying that your time is the most precious thing on earth and in eternity. The choices you make with your time right now determine your destiny in eternity. Amen? This is why there's no neutrality in Christianity. Thank you, PMJ. You are either getting better or you're getting worse based on your investment of time. Before moving forward, I would definitely like to bring honor to our man of God at this house, Pastor Conley, for affording the opportunity to preach the word of God to encourage the saints. I think all the past I thank all the pastors at IEC for being a constant light to the community and to the world. Many blessings over all my fellow deacons, my dear elders, the ushers, and the complete IEC family. In faith, we'll see you soon. Amen. So let's pray. Father, I thank you today that as a good sermon means nothing without the Holy Spirit giving us a rhema word. I pray that as you are the path in the darkness, that we continue to follow you. That I today might not be heard, but you continue to speak. That your word takes precedent to speak to faith, church, gifts in abundance. As today, because of your greatness, we don't ask you for something when we could thank you for everything. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Church, I hope, I hope you're feeling great because this is a great word that hopefully encourages one person and life changes dynamically by faith from eternity to earth. So just like in the pandemic, we may sometimes feel like we're surrounded by darkness. Amen? Anyone feeling like that? There's a man from the Bible that we may, that may have felt like this in his life. Can anyone guess who was surrounded by darkness in their life, in the Bible? That was a man. Job. Job, Job, Job. Looking from afar, his whole life seemed like one huge pandemic. Bad news after bad news after more bad news. He used his faith in Christ as a path in the darkness. Let's jump into the word of encouragement in Job chapter 23. So we're going to start off in Job chapter 23. So the backdrop for Job chapter 23 is Job chapter 22. So in Job chapter 22, Job's friend accuses him of wickedness. And it was an unfounded 
accusation as well. In Job chapter 23, Job still proclaims God's righteousness despite the darkness all around him and all the things that happened to him. In Job chapter 24, Job complains of violence and injustice on the earth. So a lot of things happen to Job. I'll look at these three chapters, but just the whole life of Job just seems like one huge pandemic. Why I love these chapters so much is because it previews the point that you may have things happen to you during your walk of righteousness. You can still trust in God without completely understanding his ways. Amen? Job wanted to know why all these things were happening to him in life. He was searching for the meaning of why these things were happening. But what he didn't realize until later on is it helped grow his faith and his perfect understanding of our God. He wanted life's answers, but God was showing him a bigger picture for significance and purpose. We serve a covenant-keeping God who is faithful to his word. Amen? His message is unification for what's broken. Job was definitely broken many times, but always, always strengthened and unified by God. We find ourselves right now situated and acculturated in Job 23, verse verses 8 to 14. Once again, we find ourselves situated and acculturated in Job chapter 23, verse 8 to 14. So we'll take a couple of minutes to search that up. So if you got it, church, say amen. If not, I'll read it. So once again, that's Job 23, verse 8 to 14. And it reads, but if I go to the east, he is not there. If I go to the west, I do not find him. When he is at work in the north, I do not see him. When he turns to the south, I catch no glimpse of him. But he knows the way that I take. When he has tested me, I will come forth as gold. My feet have closely followed his steps. I have kept to his way without turning aside. I have not departed from the commands of his lips. I have treasured the words of his mouth more than my daily bread. But he stands alone and who can oppose him? He does whatever he pleases. He carries out his decree against me, and many such is, and many such plans he still has in store. Amen. So I just want to pause in verses eight, or sorry, I just want to pause in verse eleven and twelve. So in verse eleven, if we rewind, it says, "My feet have closely followed his." steps. So what I want you to look at is as his feet have closely followed his steps, he's asking God for his steps to be ordered because he knows the righteousness of God. In verse 12, it says that I have not departed from the commands of his lips. I have treasured the words of his mouth more than my daily bread. So as we talk about he's treasuring the commands of his lips, remember faith comes from hearing the word and the word of God continues to be heard once you set your mind to hearing what God has to receive. So to put it a different way, we want to hear it, we want to receive it, and we want to example it. Amen? Job in these verses is terrified of God's righteous judgment. Later on, as he continues to walk with the Lord, then his perspective changes. In the Old Testament, the thoughts of sin and suffering were connected because of the nature of the covenant. 
So if you're keeping God's statutes, then according to the Old Testament thinking, you'd be blessed. If you don't keep God's statutes, then you'll be cursed. The problem with this linear level of thinking is it reduces God to either good or bad based on outcome. Always remember, church, God exists outside of time, so things on earth don't have to follow a certain order. To explain it better, God is not always an A, B, C type of God. Chronological order. Sometimes he's C, B, A, Kairos, which means the appointed time. And he operates in any order he pleases in order to advance his good and perfect will for you. Amen? That's why blessings and miracles can happen at any time. He's a God that's not confined to time. So while we are on a path of righteousness, I just want to make you focus on decision making in life. Please, please, please. Point number one, protect, protect your faith. I need you to type faith in the chat room right now. Faith. I'll give you a second. Whatever is above you is beneath Jesus. He has all the power. So when you seek his heart, you'll receive his hand. Amen. Nowadays, many people are believing a lot faster in the enemy than God because of what they see going on in the world. This is a sad phenomenon, but it's true. They have become very comfortable with seeing content that focuses on a slogan. If it bleeds, it leads. This appeals and satisfies their interests because they're searching because they're not searching for truth. So instead of focusing on maybe permanent truth, what they're doing is they're satisfying their interest on it bleeds, so it leads, instead of searching for real gospel truth. God is, despite this, God is so faithful that where there's a beautiful promise, there's an ugly process. So what I mean by this is faith might not look good or feel good sometimes, but it's the best thing for you, like medicine. There can be godly purposes in suffering unrelated to sin and punishment. Protect your faith by carefully positioning certain people around you in life. In Job chapter 22, so I'm going to refer to Job a lot because right now in the pandemic, Job is easily the person identified with the most in the Bible. So in Job chapter 22, Job had a friend named Eliphaz. Eliphaz is a Hebrew name, meaning God is fine gold. God is agile. Be sure to keep people around you that bring out the best for your purpose and not people that will use you for what you're good at. Keep it in mind. Eliphaz was accusing Job of wickedness, unfounded accusations. In Job chapter 22, verses 10 to 11, once again, in Job chapter 22, verses 10 to 11, this is where we pick up where Eliphaz accuses Job. So Job chapter 22, verses 10 to 11, it reads, that is why snares are all around you, why sudden peril terrifies you, why it is so dark you cannot see, and why a flood of water comes over you. So unfounded accusations for Job. Somehow Job kept his covering from God and stayed on the path of faith. As a side note, it sounds bad, but I'll admit it. If someone that I know falsely was accusing me of something that I especially didn't do and it was persistent and relentless like Eliphaz, I might jump off for a second my path of faith, my path of faith, fix your business, and then get back on my path of faith. Don't say amen to that, but truthful confession. 
The reason I love Job's example here so much is that despite all the hardships that Job went through, he kept moving forward with the message of hope in Christ. His faith grew more as difficult times came his way. That, to me, is inspirational and a message of hope right there. So in the pandemic, if things are coming your way, know that if Job can do it, and if an example of God and righteousness has been set forward, church, that you can do it. Amen? Job was looking for answers for why his suffering was happening to him in life. Then he received a deeper and more accurate knowledge of God unexpectedly. For as Job was looking at life from the exterior lenses, God was growing him from the interior. So in Job chapter 24 to 25, Job still acknowledges God's greatness. At this point, he's very fearful of the Lord, but he acknowledges his greatness in a statement. So in Job chapter 24 to with verse 25, it reads, If this is not so, who can prove me false and reduce my words to nothing? Here in this verse, there's injustice in the world, and Job is upset by the extent of his suffering. All this suffering, Lord, why me? But Job was certain that God knew of him and that God knew the truth of his character. I can just see a picture of Job's life, if I had to paint a visual picture for you, as walking down a pathway of uncertainty in life. And with each step that you take, you're going to become more wiser. Step by step, you're going to know which direction to go as you're following along with the Lord. To walk with the Lord is a blessing. As you move forward in life, you are growing in Christ spiritually. So physically, as you walk, if I had to demonstrate this out, as you're walking, you're growing stronger in faith spiritually. So your physical walk is one thing moving forward, but your spirit is rising up as you continue to walk. Amen? Amen. Without Jesus, nothing makes sense in life life. We have special access to God through faith in one name, and that one name is Jesus Christ. Amen? I want you to know that with Jesus, you're on the same team winning. He's got your back. Amen? You're on the same team. When you hear the name of the Lord, you know what's associated with it. You've been branded just like products that a lot of people know only by name. If I mention a product and you don't have to think about the name, that's really good branding. I don't like to give credit a lot of times, but you have to respect it. But Nike, if I tell you Nike, I didn't say the product, but you know Nike. That's good branding. And that's how we are as Christians. When people see us from afar, we've been branded with goodness, with righteousness, the good fruits of the Lord. There's a certain level of association in heaven and on earth when you say the name Jesus. As you just say it, there's just something that's stirred up every time you call upon his great name. Amen? That's why prayer is so important to your faith. Because it moves you into a position for God to give you what you need to receive. And this is is where we could find encouragement in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 to 8. Once again, that is 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6 to 8. So when we pick it up, it says, Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each man should give what he has decided in his heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, but for God, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound to you, 
so that in all things, at all times, having all you need, you will abound in every good work. Amen? Amen. That's a constant encouragement. Sometimes instead of praying, I want to create just a situation for you because I personally do it a lot. Sometimes instead of praying your way out of a situation, just know and believe that God wants to join you in your situation to see you through. And we can find this in Daniel chapter 3. We don't have to turn there now, but that's where the Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego are in the furnace and God joins them in the furnace to not only be with them, but to see them through so that he can get the glory and everybody around knows who really deserves the praise. I can show it to you a different way like this. At times we're praying for something over and over and over again. And then eventually we had enough and then we stop. We rest. And then we finally realize God's power at play. We let go and we let God. Then we have a new fresh perspective. We have new sight and we really see what we have already. And then to take that further, we notice that God has already given us what we've prayed for. But the problem is it just wasn't what we were expecting. It didn't turn out the way we wanted. And that's why we didn't see it in the first place because we were praying over and over and over again for the thing to work our way. But God was working on it the whole time. He's always the certainty in uncertainty, alpha and omega. I'll give it to you even a different way. The prophetess Samantia said it best about prayer. In order to release our burdens to Christ, we have to realize we're holding on to something or someone. Amen? Prayer by faith frees us up so we feel better talking to God and we feel lighter because it's in Jesus' mighty hands. Amen? The prophetess Suen said once we are spending time with Christ and have accepted our purpose, we need to stand in the gap for others because we have said yes, that's when we know that we can have an impact in the Lord because we understand our impact. Amen? That's deep. The importance of your faith and prayer especially when it comes on to interceding for others in the pandemic is critical, absolutely critical to change. I can't stress and I can't pray for that enough. So while we are on the path of righteousness and making decisions in life, please, 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 if you hear nothing, hear point number two, know that you are the church. We have to know the power that's in our testimony. We shall overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony and example it for others. I'm not referring to four walls church right now, but I'm referring to you as the individual, the church. We have to show the world what love looks like. We have to hear the word, we have to receive the word, and we have to example the word. We, if, we simply give the, if we simply keep the word for ourselves, it will not be useful to loving others. In Mark chapter 12, verse 31, this is how they put it. Once again, that's Mark chapter 12, verse 31. And I'll pick it up right now. And it says, the second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no greater command than this. Amen. You are the church wherever you go in this world. Let me repeat that again. So it sinks not just into your mind, not just into your body, but into your spirit. You are the church wherever you go in this world. You have been marked with the greatness that surpasses all levels of understanding. 
be like Job because he kept going and kept seeking in life to end up finding God's goodness at every turn despite his circumstance. Amen? If you ever, 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 ever forget this, we're going to do something that's different. We are going to create an amen timeline right now. You're probably thinking and asking yourself, what's an amen timeline? You know what? I'm glad you asked. An amen timeline is simply time stamping what God has done for you with a time marker and writing down amen as confirmation. So in the chat to practice, we're going to write your name. So don't write my name. So you're going to write your name. You're going to write down one thing that God has done for you. And you're going to type amen. So we'll go through that once again. So we're all on the same page for an amen timeline. So what we're going to do for the amen timeline is, first of all, we're going to dust off the keyboard in case it's dusty. So that way you're nice and clean. So we're going to write down our name in the chat. We're going to write down one thing that God has done for you, and we're going to type amen. I'll give you five seconds in virtual world. So I'll set my virtual clock right here. Okay, that's good. Five seconds is up. So, for example, if I was typing, or I don't have my phone. Oh, no, I have my phone. So if I was to log on, I could put in Jermaine. Good health, amen. And I just type that up right now. So I can give you another five seconds virtually. Amen timeline. Amen, amen. By faith, we can touch and agree. Every day, if you write down a new thing for your amen timeline that God has done, then you will realize why you are essential to the kingdom as the church. If the world doesn't hear the good news of the gospel from you, where else will they hear it? We can look at Romans chapter 10, verse 17, and see what that has for us as encouragement. Romans, once again, that's Romans chapter 10, verse 17, as encouragement. And the word says, consequently, Faith comes from hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word of Christ. Amen? Faith comes from hearing. Hearing comes from the word. A person's perception is their reality. A defeated reality comes from a defeated mentality. I'll rewind that and say that once again. A person's perception is their reality a defeated reality comes from a defeated mentality that's why renewing our minds is critical so in romans chapter 12 i don't need you to turn there i'll just read it right here because i have it prepared romans chapter 12 verse 2 do not conform to the pattern of this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Joining a life group, a Bible study, or being with two or more believers helps to mature you as a believer because you can't live life alone. Amen? Pastor Finu last week had an excellent message and he said something last week that stayed in my spirit. He said, this is the greatest time for the church because God is doing a new thing. We can change methods as the church to reach the world. Amen? Church, I don't know about you, but that has me excited about the future of church. Not just our church, IEC, as great as it is, not just the local church, as great as that is, but the universal church. I have the privilege 
of being in the millennial generation. I know, I know, we got a bad rap, but I've seen life for two different churches. I have seen the church from yesteryear where there was a reverence and respect for wisdom, God, and his word. Where people used to call this city, Toronto, the good. Does anyone call it that anymore? Does anyone remember that? I have seen a lot of good leaders, but at the same time, I never knew that I was one myself. Fast forward to this present day, the church is in a different position, times are changed, and I am one of the leaders that others are looking towards. That's a different thought. Sometime, sometimes I don't understand this Christianity, but I still know who is in control. Amen? I know my certainty in uncertainty. He is still the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Amen? What I'm trying to say, church, is my faith has been given a high dose of encouragement because new seeds of faith at this very moment previously and in the future are being planted on good ground for the younger generation to grow up under and in. As a youngster, what I used to see in the church is different than right now. And that is a good thing because the church is now growing not just locally, but universally, once again, on a revival, a massive scale. God is using the season to align, and he's using the season for calling us back to him. The more we continue to seek him is the more we continue to grow, and then we'll be able to call upon the name of the Lord. Amen? So what I want you to think about as we're growing in this season is that God is love. We can pick this up in 1 John chapter, 20, chapter 4, verse 8. It simply says, anyone who does not love does not know God because God is love. God is love, so he has an endless supply in order to change the world. I just want you to think about that. God has an endless supply of love in order to supply and change the world one household at a time. To the younger generation, I say, arise. Now is your time to help us as a church, as a body, as believers, to move forward. Just as a frog doesn't drink water, it surrounds itself in order to absorb it. I pray that as Christ and his church surrounds you, that you receive the blessing of your calling, the anointing of your mantle, and the strength to face tomorrow because he lives. Amen, young people? It's no longer us or you. It's now we. Let that sink in. And you have an important seat at the table in order to inspire others as the church. Not we the north, but we the church. Amen? While we are on the path of righteousness, making life decisions, please, 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 I can't echo this enough. If you don't remember anything of what I just said, because it's not me, it's the Lord. Point number three is stay positive with your gift. The Lord gives every good and perfect gift. We're encouraged by this in James chapter 1, verse 17. It says, every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows, staying, so I want you to remember that, 
God doesn't change like shifting shadows. He's not like man that he should lie. Staying positive in the process is important because you may be the only one God has called to use. We find encouragement in Matthew chapter 22, verse 14. For many are called, but few are chosen. Amen? Church, you might be, and you are, I'll be bold in faith, you are those few that are chosen in Christ. God may be calling you to greater by being the only member in your family or your workplace that can bring about change. I want you to think about that. You may be the only person in your family or your workplace to bring about change. And I'm not talking about superficial change, things that just happen overnight. I'm talking about God level change. So remember, if you forget, he has graced you for the pain. Amen? He has graced you for the pain. Whatever you're going through, that's the word that I want to echo into your spirit at this moment in time, that even though the pandemic is difficult, even though you've had loved ones pass away, even though things might not seem as if they're according to your destiny, your plan, God has a special plan for you, and he's gifted you for the pain. I know the pandemic feels like it's breaking you, but God is only allowing it to make you new. I always remember he is in control no matter what may come your way. Your life is in his hands. Amen? Most times, it's easy for me to follow the instructor, God, especially when I like the instructions, when I know I'm going to get self-benefits. But, Lord, help me to see things the way you do. The answer isn't always important, but the way there is more significant with you there, Lord. Whenever I can use my gift to bring you glory, that's when I feel the most connected to you. I thank you, God, that I don't have a lot, but it always seems to be more than enough. This season is an excellent time to transfer the faith from your ability, your hand, into his capability. I'll say that once again. This is an excellent time to transfer the faith from your abilities into his capability. Take God at his word. When you give it, it will be given on to you. Encouragement is found in Luke chapter 6, verse 38. Give and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. I want you, church, to test God as the object of your faith. To see if he's really true. His word and his way never return void. Isaiah chapter 55, it is the same with my word. I send it out and it always produces fruit. It will accomplish all that I want it to. And it will prosper everywhere I send it. God's word and you are an unstoppable combination that never returns void. I guarantee when you have things in Christ and when you're praying in his will, that's when you'll see things happen. Church, it doesn't have to be money. You can give your time to Christ and see what he does. You can give your faithfulness to Christ and you can see what he does. The reason is that he's making all things new. In Revelations chapter 21, verse 5, it reads, And he who was seated on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. Also, 
he said, write this down for these words are trustworthy and true. The path of faith we all walk is absolute certainty in Christ. Once again, the path of faith we all walk is absolute certainty in Christ. I want you to soak that in your spirit. Absolute certainty in Christ. When the pandemic rages and continues to go on, remember, absolute certainty in Christ. As the walk in Christ may seem unsure at some times, know that he is always with you no matter where you go or what you do. He is the same God that's on the mountaintop and he's the same God as in the valley. The path in darkness is only in him. Amen? I want to sink that in once again. The same God that's on the mountaintop is the same God that's in the valley. And when you know the God that we know, he makes a path in the darkness. Amen? Let's finish up like this. I want to leave you with these two real life examples of what happens in life on the path of righteousness as you continue to walk by faith. May I have the lights, please, in the house? Unfortunately, this is what happens in terms of life. I want you to be able to understand this church because this is what happens in life. That all of a sudden, things don't work out the way you expected it to. That it's shocking, it's unexpected, and it's very sudden. Once you're here, I want you to remember who is in control in terms of life. That right now you might be shocked that you might be looking for answers in all the wrong places, but you can't forget who's in control because of who's around you. You can't forget about who's in control because you have to focus on who is inside of you. You can't forget about who is in control because you have to remember that he has control of me. That you have to remember in this dark place that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. That, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil because the Lord is with me. In the darkness, even though it's physically dark, I can see the light of your spirit, Lord. There's no conflict in God's hand and heart because he orders my steps. Just as Job was in darkness during his life, he knew God's unpredictability can be fearful, but it's balanced by his unchanging faithfulness to his children. I see you, Lord, through my past, present, future, so that I know that you can do it again, that if you did it before, that you can make a way. Words of faith and a mentality to create a supernatural connection and a pathway to access the Father through Jesus Christ. Once you see him, know that his is the glory his is the honor and his is the future of what's to come he alone is worthy that just as the hebrew boys were in this place in uncharted unfamiliar territory in uncertainty they were saying it's over there's nothing else we can do we ran a race of faith that lord we're going to see you and lo and behold, there was another man in the fire that right now in our dark place in this time that the Lord is with you and he'll continue to illuminate your light so that you can see. 
You don't walk by sight, but by faith. As you continue to pray, opportunities just find you as God works in the dark to bring forth a new thing in the light. That I want you to remember that even though you might be in darkness, even though it might seem uncertain that when opportunities might come that somebody might have to leave a job and there's more things ahead to come that God is working in the background even though you don't see him. So I want to encourage you just as this is darkness that the Lord is still working. You might not be able to see him but he's putting things in place for when the light comes back and you'll be able to receive. Thank you, Lord, for the light. Can I have the lights, please? Once again, we'll just continue on. Now that we've found the light and we can see its direction, that is our question. So sometimes in life, we feel and we wonder, where do I go if I can't see God physically? This is probably where we start soul searching. Or you might be searching all over the place. You might look around and say, God, where are you? You might talk to a friend. He might be over here. And you're out of focus. You're just saying in terms of family, I'm looking for God. Does anybody understand? I'm looking for something that the world doesn't have to offer. You might go past family and look at the internet. Or you might go to parties looking for something that only God can give you. Needless to say that even though we are missing Christ, I'll take it a step further, we're missing spiritual direction. When you don't see God, just like you don't see me, there is where we have to know that our priorities must change. God moves to number one in order for you to find him. Seek and you shall find. So this is where you put the kingdom first because we have to seek the kingdom in order to see the Lord. Praying to God is a great place to start. Reading his word and being around other like-minded believers will help to grow your connection to God, to see him. Being honest with God is most important because he already knows where you are. And he cares about you. And he knows where he wants to take you. Every day, if you learn a little more and you draw closer in order to see Christ, then you'll be able to be planted. You'll be able to be firmly rooted so that at the right time, you'll be able to see the Lord. He'll come into focus just as he was out of focus. It's just your direction. And an obvious and easy encouragement that I want to give to people is a lot of times I do this. When we're looking for the Lord, a lot of times we don't do the most obvious things. A story that encouraged me, and I found it pretty funny, was there was a lady, she went to a pet store, and she bought a parrot. So she's excited. When she gets home, she starts working on getting the parrot to talk, doing what she wants, not thinking about, hey, the parrot has needs. So the first thing that she does is she says, I'm going to get this parrot to talk. So what she did is she ended up buying the parrot a toy. And then she gave the parrot the toy, expecting the parrot to talk. No talking. She got upset. Then she turned and then she's like, okay, no problem. The parrot won't talk. I'll play the parrot some music. And she played the music. She thought that was going to work. And then still, unfortunately, the parrot, the parrot wasn't talking. So now 
she's pretty upset. She's like, I wasted my money. This parrot is useless. So she's like, okay, I'll start talking to the parrot myself because maybe the parrot's not smart. So maybe if the parrot sees me talking to the parrot, the parrot will talk back. So she starts talking to the parrot. Still, nothing. The parrot won't talk. The parrot won't do what she wants. Probably the next week, the parrot ends up dying, unfortunately. So she goes back to the pet store that she bought the parrot at, and she's pretty upset with the owner. She's like, your parrot is useless. It died on me. It didn't even talk before it died. The owner was confused for the pet store, and the owner asked, did you feed it? And then she said, no. And as crazy as that story might sound, that when we're seeking God physically, a lot of times we're looking for God in all the wrong places. That God is the word, that God is prayer, that God is love. So when we look to all these other things, just like the lady with the parrot, where she was focused on what she wanted, if you want to see God, God is all around. God is inside. So you don't have to do all these things. Understand that as you continue to seek, God will already find you. He knows where you are, and we already know whose you are. We're his. Amen? So we're going to close in prayer. And the prayer simply says, Lord, you have lit our pathway of faith in the darkness. I rejoice at those who have drawn closer to you in this moment. Encourage their walk to be helped by faith, your church, and giftings from you. If there is anyone that doesn't know you, Lord, or doesn't know your power, or doesn't know your love, that right now through Church Online, I pray that they receive the greatest gift possible, your salvation by hitting that accept button to follow your truth forever and ever. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Amen, church. If you miss that, we still have an opportunity as far as praying for salvation, that there's those hosts online on the church online platform who would love to be with you to share the gift of salvation. So just hit that button on the screen that comes up and just hit accept for prayer. And I'm just going to pray for those who continue to just have light on their pathway in the darkness. Father, we thank you because your way is enough, that you are more than enough and you are the God of justice, righteousness, and hope. I pray for each and every individual out there that their pathway has now been lit as confirmation in Christ that they can face another day, that you are the great I am, and we pray for your strength, we pray for your faith, we pray for your church, and we pray for your gifts to be in them. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Church, be blessed on your path of faith in life as Job was in his. God bless. And here is the lovely Pastor Darlene. Greetings, everyone. We are glad that you have joined us today. Thank you, for Jermaine, for that very encouraging word. May God bless you. As uh, Jermaine said, uh, if you're live streaming this today, there's the prayer button. You can press that, and someone will pray with you in a private chat area. If you're watching this any other time and you feel you need prayer or someone to talk to, you can always call the IEC office at 416-747-7208 and leave a message if we don't answer, and we will get back to you. Every Wednesday at 7 p.m., we meet on Zoom to pray for the many requests we receive. The list is updated regularly, and new requests and updates are forwarded as they're received to the faithful prayer group. If you need prayer or know someone who does, please let us know. 
We're not able to pray for all the requests here online. However, be assured that we are always ready to pray for you. Every week I stand here and promote the IECFamily.com website and our YouTube channel. And why do I keep doing this? Well, first of all, our social media team works hard at keeping the website up to date, and I like to support their effort. And secondly, there's a lot of information on it. I've talked about the kids' ministry and um, missions and sermons and Pastor Dave's letter. And last week, we talked about the next steps for new believers. And this week, I'd like to suggest that you check out the upcoming events page. The page looks great with all the banners showing the ladies' cocoon room on Tuesdays, Wednesday night prayer, the youth lock-in, and the speakers for the next few weeks. And if you click on the banner, it will actually take you to the event. So check it out. Next Sunday, February the 14th, is Valentine's Day. Pastor Dave and his lovely wife, Sharon, will minister to us together. And at this time, we have a promo video to watch. One of the greatest joys in life is when men and women who love each other, live for each other, and help each other. On the love of life, get to do a tag team message on Sunday, February 14th, Valentine's Day. So come, as the lovely Sharon and I do a message to encourage you, build you up, and to share some of the wonderful love stories that we have, but, but no secrets, right? We'll see. We'll see. Oh. Join us, will you, at 10.30, February the 14th, because that's when the love boat sails. See you there. Beginning on the 21st, we will have a new series to look forward to from Pastor Dave. The title of his new series is Wisdom of the Word, and I'm looking forward to that. Our regular Plug and Prime meetings are always on Zoom. Uh, Plug Youth meets Mondays at 6, and Prime Release meets Wednesdays at 7, and the link is always the same. Last week, I mentioned the two new Plug events, and do you remember what the acronym PLUG stands for? Power Living Under God. Plug Prime presents the Ladies' Cocoon Room. This will be a safe space for women 18 and up to share, learn, and grow in their relationship with God. It will be held on Tuesdays at 7 p.m. on Zoom. For more information, please look on our website, YouTube, or Instagram. When clicking the Zoom link, the host will assist you. Plug Youth will be having a lock-in on Zoom on Friday, February the 12th, at which Operation Cages will be presented. That's C-A-G-E-S, and it stands for Culinary, Arts, Games, Entertainment, and Serenity. Contact Pastor Winston or one of the leaders to sign up if you haven't already done so. The first 20 to sign up will get a delivered package from Plug for the event, and will automatically be entered in the draw for the top prize. There will be lots of games and prizes will be given out every hour from 6 p.m. until midnight. It sounds like a fun night. Elder Joe had his chemo treatment for the month, one pill a day for five days, and he is still feeling very tired and has difficulty getting up from a sitting or, or laying position. Uh, please continue to pray that God will strengthen his body every day and as we continue to pray and believe for complete healing. Thank you to all who faithfully give their tithes and offerings. May God bless you above and beyond all you can ask or imagine. Remember, if you have questions or concerns or need prayer, don't hesitate to call the church at 416 747 7208. We may not be here in person. However, we are still available for you. Let's pray. Almighty God, everlasting Father, we praise you. We worship you, Lord. There is truly none like you. You are everything that we need. Everything we could ever ask for, we can find it in you, our Savior, our Lord, our friend, 
our provider, our protector, our comfort, our refuge, our deliverer, and our healer. O oh God, you are everything that we could ever need. We give you thanks, Lord. Yes, this past year has been a difficult year, and we are not seeing an end to any of the restrictions, to some of the problems, Lord, but we choose to believe with all of our hearts, with all that is in us, Lord, we choose to believe that you are still in control, that you are Lord, that you, Lord, are the truth and the life. Our life is in you, God. Give us the strength to continue to endure. Give us wisdom to know how to pray for our leaders who are struggling. They need your wisdom. You have put people in places of authority, and you have told us to pray for them, and so we do. We lift each and every one of them up. This is not an easy time for them and their families, Lord. The stress the leaders are under cannot be healthy for the family and all the time they spend in meetings away from their family. We pray for renewed strength for each and every leader and peace and well-being for their families. Thank you, Lord, because we know that the answer is on the way. We don't know when, we don't know how, but that's truly the beauty of it, Lord God, because we can leave it to you because you are in control. You are working things out, Lord God, in your timing and in your perfect way because your ways are so much better than ours. We have very limited thoughts and understanding. We choose to trust your ways. Thank you for the peace that comes with that, Lord, that we don't have to fret. We don't have to worry about tomorrow because you've got that covered. Thank you, Lord. There are, there are many who are having a difficult time, and we send your word of healing, of rest, of strength, and of peace. And we ask you to put your hedge of protection around them every day, God. We thank you, Lord. Lord, we know that there are many in the IEC family who have experienced health issues and not all COVID-related. They've had tests and surgeries. They may have lost a loved one, and it hasn't been easy for anyone, Lord God. But because of who you are and because of your great love for us, Lord, we can rest in knowing that you care about all the details of our lives. I pray for comfort and peace and strength for everyone who has lost a loved one. There are so many, we cannot name them all, but you know each one by name. Lord, help us as the IEC family to show your love to those who need to know you care. Even though we cannot see each other in person and give hugs, we can bring your love and words of encouragement through the phone and the internet. We can let them know that you haven't forgotten them, and neither have we. And for those whom we're not able to reach by phone, we pray that you will reach them, God, in your great love and mercy. Thank you, Lord. We continue to commit our youth and young adults to you. Pastor Winston and his leaders, we thank you for each one. And we thank you for the programs that are put in place where they can meet together and discuss the things that concern them. We pray for protection over them, especially on social media, because that is where they spend most of their time. Give them discernment to make wise choices in what they are seeing and what they are doing. And give the parents wisdom as well as they endeavor to support their youth and young adults. Lord, we give you thanks for our faithful givers. Bless them, Lord. Even in the difficult times, they still give because they know that truly everything they have comes from you. Bless them and meet their needs according to your riches in Christ Jesus. Be with Elder Joe and his family as they continue on this journey. Thank you that he has completed his treatment for the month of February. We pray that drugs will do what they were designed to do and pray that any side effects will be minimal. We send your word of healing to him, and we are continuing to believe for his miracle. Be with Louisa and the family, and continue to give them your strength daily. Lord, be with all those who have joined us today. Keep them safe during the week, and help us to trust you and not to lean on our own understanding, to acknowledge you in all our ways as you direct our path. We ask all these things in your most wonderful name, Jesus. Amen. Thank you all for tuning in today. See you next Sunday, Valentine's Day, as Pastor Dave and Sharon minister 
to us together. Have a good week, and God bless you.